<laughs> Let's go. So, uh, you was at a bluegrass festival. That's right. Mm. In the beautiful hills that I call home. Not right now. I live. I live at the beach right now, mm. but. Yeah. But I'm going to get my ass back to the mountains here soon. No, I actually like bluegrass. It's not a lot of it I remember. I mean, of course, Brother Arthur is my favorite of all time. The uh, Man of Constant Sorrow is my shit. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Man, that, oh, I'm man. sorry. That's one of the illest blue, uh, bluegrass songs ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. We sing that one. So we go to the concerts. There's so many people that play out there. We go see them and then in between sets, we'll come back and jam. It's just, honestly, it's yeah. the highlight of my year. And oh my um, is, music is kind of the reason I got into the adult entertainment industry. I was recording my second album, and I had done, like, GoFundMe, Indiegogo type things to raise money for it. And I was short, about $2,000, so uh, I started uh, uh, stripping. Uh, what type of music do you do? Um, I had an ex who was really musical and he labeled my music as post ambient folk which oh, i still don't know what the hell that means but um mm. it's it's a little folky a little spiritual mm. kind of tribal i play with the hand drum guitar ukulele dulcimer okay. i play with a oh, looper so i'm ukulele. able to layer oh, i love the ukulele sounds. don't yeah. have to play that motherfucker but i love the sound though for the ukulele it's a good um portable instrument like yeah. as much as I like to travel and have traveled, it's a good instrument as a, a carry on, you know, oh, set of toting a guitar. <laughs> yeah, because I, I did music myself. But actually I still but I haven't recorded in a three years. But I, I, I did some I did some music. My, my yeah, it's been a while for me ideas. too, as far as like professional studio recordings. Yeah. I've I've done some home recordings off my iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got to see. I, I got to re get because uh, I had the pre. What was it? Pre Sonic, and it was they had a fucking damn it, and not an app, but you know a program that I was using to record mm -hmm. until sure. my computer got fucking smacked, destroyed because I was watching the Undertaker. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. This is what happened. I got to tell this story. Okay, you know cameo the shit. Look, cameo. you're making me jealous. You're smoking one. I'm about to go get my grinder. Uh, I mean, go ahead, because this is the smoker's line. I want to smoke one with you. I forgot that. Yeah. I forgot that. See, see, see. So even relevant to do that. So I'm gonna roll one up. So I'm up. I'm listening to the cameo. It, it, uh, somewhere with, okay, people, y'all know what cameo is. Follow my smokers. Y'all know what cameo is. Okay, if you do, you cameo. don't do that. That who cares? All right. So basically, it's like your star sends you a message. So the Undertaker had a message. And when I heard what the Undertaker said, I can't remember what it was. It made me spit all my coffee on the damn seat. <laughs> oh, I got to hear this. And I don't know what he said. I can't remember exactly what he said. It was just some, it was some, it was because with Cameo, you write it. And they supposed to say it. So I was sitting there and they shit. I said, oh, fuck. I was so mad at my damn self. It was unbelievable. But, yeah. Now, nah, I knew that was cool. Plus, a lot of weed smokers probably out there at the bluegrass. It was, for sure. It was. And, and, and it was I was one of weed. them. I was definitely one of them. Oh, I would have been out there, too, God dang it. Sharing, yes, sharing the medicine. Oh, yes. Lord. <laughs> and, 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 and how many guys... Was staring at that Appalachian arse. You know, I don't pay no mind. So if they are, I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't be paying no mind to eyes yeah, on me. But, um, cause, cause, cause I, I have I, my jean shorts on, my little booty. Yeah. I didn't want it to be too much, so I got, I got a size up. I'll show you. I just mm -hmm. love these shorts. I've got a couple of pairs like this. Oh yeah. You can kind of. Yeah. You kind of roll up. Yeah, if you want you 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 want to show more thigh. Yeah, yeah, you can really. I mean, we can yeah. really do it like that. Oh yeah. See, see, and yes, that's that famous arse. That's that arse. That's that arse. So don't worry. <laughs> you get into check out this open. shirt. Can you see my shirt? Well, let me see what you got. Taco. Can you read it? But it's taco 
taco what, cat, taco cat. And then read it. Peel the back. <laughs> it's true. Isn't that shit crazy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I found this at the good Goodwill. I was stoke. I thought I was tripping at the yeah, Goodwill. But, but I, I checked out your your page, and I which and one? I got many. But, of course, your ex. What's that? My Twitter. Your My Twitter. Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and that's the one that I'm the most said, active on. Is when, when she says she has an Appalachian arse, no, she has a very nice arse. Or ass. <laughs> you know, I just said arse because I was afraid to say ass. I was afraid I would get banned or kicked off of something. Oh, no, so, arse man, doesn't seem to be as harsh now. as ass. Oh my goodness. I, I did my research. So with that Ooh. being said. Ooh. I'm nervous. Hello, smokers. She's going to pull out the bag. To the smokers lounge as she rolls and grind her weed and get ready to roll up. Let me speak to you suckers out there. How you doing? You know I am. I'm your wonderful, wonderful host, Kevin the Summer Champ, aka the Porn Rap Star. Find all my links with one link, allmylinks.com backslash Porn Rap Star. Now, let me tell you about the four sponsors that's bringing you this wonderful podcast. First one being the hottest adult mag in the game, rockstarsmagazine.com. Next up, award-winning, award-nominated, voiceover with Smut, and they got an even award-nominated virtual reality side of their website, talking about blusheronica.com. And for you candle people, whether you like the smell or you want to do some freaking shit with Ooh, your I wax, I got you covered. I'm talking about the Kinky Candle Company on SD. Link in the description. And for your lingo needs, I got you covered. Miss Lady, which I will be getting her on this show eventually. We just got to get it right. Especially because she's been screaming at me about getting screaming y'all. But anyway, I'm talking about the legal beagle. She is the queen of law from the Queen City. None other than Mitchell Ferrari. Whether it's gun laws, whether it's expunges, whether it's child support, Whatever your legal needs is, she got you covered. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram, and she's a legit lawyer, ladies and gentlemen. And you can find me five days out the week in the morning at fully swap, full swap radio.com. Also, you can check me out at skyhawkafterdarktv.com as well as the BGP LLC app. Now, I like this lady because, you know, I, I have a affinity for country sexy <laughs> Feels with a nice ass that is kind of a chameleon because she can give you different looks. Right. And you try to believe from what I've seen. Oh, she's a good old country, country <laughs> freak. So I'm going to sit back and let this gorgeous lady, as she finished rolling her shit, introduce herself. <laughs> Howdy, folks. I'm Paisley Flowers or Appalachian Ass. It's um, mm. it's a pleasure, it's an honor to be here with Almost you definitely. doing this interview. I'm super excited. I'm feeling good. Oh yes, oh yes, and and trust and believe it's uh, just with from just checking you out, I was like, okay, this 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 lady got some potential. <laughs> Thank you. Seven years it's later, so I've been working it. You know. Yeah, because it's been seven it's, years. Seven years, good night. Yeah, I've so, been out there seven years. Oh my goodness! So, let's go back. What got you into this to begin with? Music. It was music. It was that album I needed. I had done GoFundMe, Indiegogo to raise money, and I was short two thousand dollars, and I needed. Mm -hmm. Um, a large radius of strip or a small radius of strip clubs. It was like four in a 20 mile radius. So I was like, you know, as part of the culture out here, let me get a job at the strip club. It was something I always wanted to get mm -hmm. over, not necessarily like dancing, but I was just always insecure about my body. And like, I just wanted to go balls to the ball and mm -hmm. conquer a fear and make my money. And the plan at the time was to make the money and get out of it. But um, I got used to it and I had mm -hmm. a lot of fun. 
I really had a lot of fun and I love pole dancing and the exercise. I was in the best shape of my life. The first club I ever worked at. They talk about that new girl money and I got it, boy. And then it started to slow down. So that's when I got on sexy jobs and landed you again. Said sexy no jobs. She yeah. said sexy jobs. Well, I'm you know, yes, yeah, that's jobs. old school. That's, that's old school. Shit. That's and like, I'm going to tell you what's funny. It, it wouldn't surprise me if my partner might have hit you up on sexy jobs. Probably. It wouldn't Everybody's surprise Everybody's going to hit me up on there. Yeah, like I was on there list too, of sex- <laughs> I was on there my damn self. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It didn't do nothing <laughs> I'm for me. still on there. Actually, today, I just, I noticed if you delete your account yeah, and then yeah. start a new one, all of a sudden, people are hitting you up again. Like, immediately, I had, I had an offer come out to me. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Sweet. So, that's no where way. I'm at. Seven years later, I'm like, how do I rebrand, reinvent mm-hmm. myself? How do I do this differently? Because there's, I looked at my pictures on my website. I was like, holy shit, these pictures are from seven years ago. Like, mm-hmm. how have I not updated this? So, so basically, okay, when you got on sexy jobs, so you wasn't creating content. You was getting paid gigs at the time. For the when I part. got on sexy jobs, I was just dancing at the club. Okay. And I was curious about shooting pornography. Mm-hmm. And I think Indica Flowers, I, I found her and I was like, wow, Damn. that's that's yeah, the that's name right there. That's the woman. That's, the like, right the, there. that's what I'm going for. And, <laughs> and I've debated getting dreadlocks or not. I'm not going to do it. But I just I, I love her style. I love how she goes about branding herself. And yeah. I thought, you know, I think I could do this. Mm-hmm. But boy, mm-hmm. it, has it been a wild ride? There's no man <laughs> for this line of you work. Ain't so it's been so, a lot of ups and downs for sure. So all the sexy jobs, you got your first booking. Am I correct? Yes, with Net Video so, Girls so, and Casting Couch. Okay, then so where I worked with T Real, if you know him. Ooh, yeah, I know you talking yeah. about. So let's let's unpack that. Let's unpack that. This is your first time going on camera. You know, yeah. you didn't strip to the strip club, so being naked ain't nothing. Right, you know, I was warmed up. I was getting warmed yeah, up. Yeah, you was hard. Yeah, yeah. So, speak to your feelings. Was you nervous? You know, how did they, you know, relax you? You know, because like I said, this was studio porn. This was yeah. not because even back then, it, it, there were no cell phones. And Am- amateur porn was amateur porn, but it wasn't to what it is now. You feel what I'm saying? In other words, right. people weren't people weren't trying to damn make content like that. Let's keep it one. They were trying to get paid gigs. So you walking in, tell me, paint the picture for us. Well, walking in, I felt I felt really good. I felt comfortable. And then at some point, you know, because I was out there two or three days, and the plan was to do two shoots. Mm-hmm. Everybody I worked with, I felt really comfortable with. I just had a moment, like a personal moment to myself. I had never been to Los Angeles. I had never traveled done porn and it did hit me like a freight train and i was like what the hell am i doing with my life like what i've come out here to do like what in the world am i doing for all i know this i could get traffic you know the fear that that arises with that um and i i did feel that for some other shoots but now i'm i know what i'm doing and i'm i'm comfortable with it but um i was nervous as hell and the the first talent they had lined up to work with me you know it's funny because i took my ukulele and they had me on net video girls they had me if you look at my scene i play Mm. i'm playing a song Mm. that i wrote they had me do that on camera and then i went to do the scene with the male talent and he couldn't perform Mm -hmm. and they made me say on camera it's all in the scene that i was uncomfortable i need i was dating a girl at the time i said i need to check in with my girlfriend i just i don't know if i can do this they made me play it off like it was yeah. my fault that the scene wasn't going yeah. on, but really it was the male yeah. talent that couldn't perform that day. So the next day they so, ended up hiring a new male talent. So 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 you so your first experience on camera. The man you couldn't saw fuck me. What, bingo. Cause and it, that was, that was the whole reason I got that was hard. I mean, I was like, what is now, wrong with me? Now, I mean, now every, was it the chemistry? Was the chemistry off? Was it I thought it was on? 
I thought it was on, but what you're seeing through your lens might not be what somebody else is seeing through yeah, theirs. I can tell you. And they can have bad days. You know, a woman it. on her worst day can have a, yeah. a good shoot. A man yeah. on his best day, if just something goes wrong, it's the show's over. He can't yeah. do it. No, We're relying on that hard day and that cum shot. It's a mental game because it's, mm -hmm. it's you're fucking in front of that camera. For sure. In a room full of people. So it's it's not as simple as holding your cell phone and you in the car. No, no, people. No. <laughs> but this is a talent that has worked with so many women. Like he was, I was, I'm not going to say his name. I wouldn't do that, but I was just stoked to work with him, you know? I mean, no, it happens. And still to this day, it, I'm like, what went wrong? Like, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I tell females this. No, say I tell females do not take it personal, because some dudes have their issues. You know, period. Even for sure. anything can be going me, on in some male talents, talents right now. Some of some some of people's favorite male talents have a hard time keeping up on camera. Probably because they're working. They're working so much. You know, what I'm saying you know, period. It's probably hard. So I mean, some of the motherfuckers that take the, you know. Yeah, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. You know I'm I, I used to get, I used to get the pill. I've seen people put a shot in their, their wiener. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I never had uh, the most I ever did was smoke weed or go give me one of them damn little energy pills for the goddamn uh, convenience store. Let's go. <laughs> All natural. So, probably some so horny the, goat weed or something there. <laughs> so the next day, you work with a new talent. Now, how yes. did that work out? And let's talk about oh. that. It was awesome. It was so awesome. It was the best shoot ever. Well, at that point, I didn't have anything to compare it to, but compared to the day before, it was awesome. I really vibed with the talent, and we ended up showering together, which I thought was a nice bonding ritual, like, after the shoot to get clean yeah. together, and we were just chatting, and he said, i never forget it, he said, some people are givers, some people are receivers, and some people are both. Yeah. And that really stuck with me. Because yeah. in this line of work, it's it's a lot about the giving and receiving and, and the balance of that. And it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Because the because it's people don't realize when the chemistry is there on camera, the energy exchange, all that shit. That, yeah, I'm a I'm a y'all know I am about energy. I had people talk about tantrums and all that <laughs> shit on this show. It's it's a it's a beautiful moment because see people don't realize the shoot has to go right from the time you walk in the room from the mixing because there is a flirtation depending on what you're time. doing that shit's got to start a week before I'm just saying if you know what is involved yeah so my, no I mean but when you do content it's before. different <laughs> yeah I mean but you but but think about it we when you doing the paid gigs. That was the luxury that was governing to you because it's quick. Because you've seen them on set. Sometimes you didn't know who you were shooting with, or you might look up and known. You know what I'm saying? Because it's paid gig, you know, period. With content, we have a little bit more of a choice. And we can develop chemistry, but from conversations or what have you. Trust me, it's it's, it's yeah, you you know it's a difference. Because <laughs> it the a content shoots, yeah. Because let's keep one it. The content shoots. Content shoots, you great. mean like what we own? Like not yeah. big companies? Yeah. Now, some of the big company shoots didn't go great, but I'm pretty sure the content shoots went very well. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of new to me. I've mostly done professional shoots. So the whole mm -hmm. content trade thing was um, sorry, I'm putting some more light on here. Okay. Oh, no, you're good, babe. Yeah, I'm getting more into content trade, mm -hmm. and um, I have a friend. The closest dick I can find is is about four mm -hmm. hours away from me in Virginia. That's the closest mm -hmm. person I have to work with. So mm -hmm. a lot of my fans on OnlyFans are asking, like, for other scenes. I'm just putting out solos right now because mm -hmm. I can't, I can't find you? a good dick, you know? I, I, babe, I, was in North Carolina, I, I can't get a plane ticket in a hotel to shoot content to sell for twelve dollars when I get home. Like yeah. It's rough. So unless people come to me, like it's not happening. No, because see the thing about it is 
in North Carolina when I was active. Now I'm kind of pissed because I'm retired and seem like I didn't bump into every fucking person that does porn in North Carolina. In so North Carolina. <laughs> After I'm retired, that means I cannot get in front of the camera. Ain't that be out of bitch? I had to bring them in. But anyway, why does it mean that? It's I you think one I mean you have free will. Why couldn't you do a scene with me? See <laughs> <laughs> look who's interviewing who now? <laughs> You don't have to answer. Pete, 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 Pete. No, no, I mean, don't get it twisted. The business does tug at me, though. I do miss it. <laughs> I do miss it. I do miss it. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. I, don't get it twisted. I can still go. No, 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 no. But anyway, but anyway, anyway. Me, we can me, keep me, your face out of it. We can just cut I mean, I, mean I, 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 I have no issue being a stunt dick. I mean. There you go. I'm just saying. I but anyway. One. I need one, boy. I, no, nah, but see, that was the biggest issue I had in North Carolina. Part of the reason why I retired also, because with me, I had to fly him in, cover hotel. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's how I feed him a wagon. And plus, keep it 100, many of them did escort, so now I have to actually cut my time with filming so they can get they their money. They can do their thing. Wow. On top of my cameraman coming from like an hour and 45 minutes away. <laughs> so we got him for five hours. We got to hit it. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, period. But it was hard to it's find. It's so much work. It's so much work. And yeah. people just think, oh, you just fuck on camera. Like, it's so much work that goes into it. Into doing it right. Yeah. Because, see, at the same token, you want talent that one knows what they're doing. Because it wasn't just like with me about whether she was good looking or what have you. It was about, yeah, I had this conversation with my man Tyler. And see, this is why I say I like her. See, we were talking about the two different type chicks. You have the, the IG model chick that got that body. And then a female like yourself. Nice body, you know, she, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, she ain't the IG girl. Okay. Guess who always sells? Ding, 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 right there. <laughs> the reason why, because nine out of ten, they want to be pretty. They don't know how to fuck on camera. They don't be loose and stuff of that nature. So it's kind of like with, with you, because one, you're just really starting to get to the content side. So that means you would do it pretty decent well with I guess you yes. how long are you, but how long are you was, still working? I'm older, you know? I'm yeah. sorry. This girl is is bothering me, so I just need to show her on oh. camera. That pink and smudge. She's camera shy. Not, pink, do pink not let her. Smudge. Look, not she won't even look. Out. She won't even make eye contact. I'm she looking for mine. Yeah, I'm looking for Zazzy. <laughs> I'm going to get her out of the yeah, room I'm real cat. quick. I'm a cat daddy. Go ahead. Yes, people. <laughs> and while she's gone... Let me remind y'all, please subscribe to Loyal Fans Premium Smoke Room, five premium podcasts for you to enjoy. That's right, people. Three wonderful co-hosts, and you know what happens on the Premium Smoke Room. Stays in Premium Smoke Room, and we'll get back to that shortly. So please take the time out and go subscribe, all right? Now, anyway, um, no, nah, but so... When did, who was your first content shoot? Hmm. That's a good question. And I don't I don't think I can accurately answer it. <laughs> because there have been so many where it's it's paid, but it's it's also trade. Mm -hmm. Oh, so 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 you were doing paid trade. Now hold on. What kind of I mean it kind of segued paid? into that when I was offered it and it it was a good deal. I would take it. Mm, okay. You know. So, so, so you would do it. What is called paid collaboration, meaning that yeah. you get paid and you walk away with the content. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. And that can all be seen that. on my my mini vids account, um, Azure Sky Films, with mm. Harry Gray. He's an older okay. 
gentleman who's really into BDSM. And he's by far the most professional, organized person I've ever worked for. It's insane, like, how organized and on top of his shit he is. So I did a lot of trade with him and was able to work with Monica mm. Sexton and Carly. I forget mm -hmm. her last name. name. Carly Cargill. They name sound for me. <laughs> yeah. I got to work. Like, it was just... I, I always love when a shoot turns into mm -hmm. like a networking thing when there's yeah. more than just two people involved. Those have been my favorite collabs. And I was okay. looking forward to going to the, um, I don't know if you heard of the sex Olympics that happened in Spain where those performers got stuck out there. Oh, um, did you hear about that? Um, this first time, I think I might've heard something about, not about yeah, it. I, was I, mean, to be there. I heard something about the sex Olympics, but I ain't heard nothing like, recently you telling me something new okay so we try to go check to the it out yeah i was check it supposed out. to be there and yeah, what so event I'm would glad you be I doing end up there what's that <laughs> what event would you have been doing at the sex olympics yeah whatever they need me to do oh my god <laughs> <I like laughs> whatever they, however i so, can be of service <laughs> <laughs> so but, but like you said i know that like i said with you um, do you do content houses? Have you been to any content houses? I have not. Mm. And that's why the whole Sex Olympics thing kind of appealed to me. Mm. I don't feel like I have to go to Spain to do that. I would like to do mm. that. Yeah, yeah because with a content person. house, you could uh, uh, easily get a lot of content plus work with established talent, female and male, that, it, and you know what I'm saying? I mean, of course, the way it works that the person that runs the house gets when gets all the content that's shot in there, but it ain't even about that. It's about getting quality content with quality talent. You know, period. And yes, everybody up in that bitch tested, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hands I would down, love to be involved that. in something like that. I really so, would. But I mean but seriously, you have pretty much been doing it. I mean <laughs> Because yeah, at the end of the day, it, not to the degree that I wanted to. I left my day job mm -hmm. the first of this year, mm -hmm. and it's um, it's been about the same or better. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's been better. It's definitely better for me and my my state of mind because mm -hmm. I just, especially in the other industry that I'm going to school for, and we mm -hmm. can go into that if you want to. Oh, should I just yeah, go, we can into go to it? whatever, baby okay, girl? Okay, um, mortuary it. science. So I'm going to school to be a funeral director and embalmer. And I've worked in the funeral industry as long as I've worked in the sex industry. I got into both around the same time. I got into mm -hmm. working at the funeral home first, and then and then the stripping started. But um, I've been pursuing that, and I have less than a year left of school. And mm -hmm. this has been a constant struggle with me. Like, somehow this line of work is going to inhibit me in that way. But yeah, um, no, I don't. yeah, I mean, I have a vision. I I got to work for myself. I have to work for myself. I can't work for anybody yeah. else. See, I can't think for about it, or something like that. But, but to but, work a nine to five for somebody and to devote yeah. your heart and soul, especially in that line of work, working with families and mm. like just working with yeah. the bodies, the sacred bodies, yeah, and the, you know, just all like my yeah, heart. Is yeah, so, I had a best friend, Scott Scarborough. He 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 had a he had a mortuary. His his dad had one of the oldest ones in North Carolina, and um, yeah, I I did not envy his his task one bit. And plus, I got family members. The Holloway shots out to them. They have a uh, funeral home, so I mean, when Bob ever leave this earth, I know who's taking me up out of here. So anyway, it's yeah, fam. It's very sacred so, work. Oh yeah, it's very sacred work. I mean, it's deep. You know what I'm saying? I love so, it. I love the depth of it, and and I just want to be able to do both. Like I'm tired of living this double life. I mean, but but see, but see, what people don't realize, you have people that have jobs. You have porn stars that are married. They have kids. You know what I'm saying? It's just right. now, of course, it's certain jobs that, of course, the, being a porn star, they find out that's your ass. <laughs> but. But the healthcare field, and I'm pretty sure in March, the more, um, I don't think they give a shit. Just as long as you do, you your, can, job. Uh, do your fucking job, they really don't care. Well, I mean, you know how many nurses right and now. And I plan it, to do it so well that it won't even be an issue. And you know what? I left my job. I didn't get fired. I left my job. So I 
I could have stayed. Mm. And and I think living in a small town doing this work, word gets around. Mm. And it was no doubt that they knew. Mm. I mean, but you was already in the strip club, so it is and two is to me it's like this. My mom always said never feel shame of what in they never feel shame. For anything that you gotta do to feed your family. And I always live by I that. I like your mama. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she was like, nah. I man. needed to hear that. You know, because it is I, 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 did... I don't feel shame personally. Like I can yeah. sleep at night. I can feel good about myself. And sometimes my job is a little bit icky. Like, depending on who I'm mm -hmm. working with and the circumstances, especially doing escort work, like, you know, mm -hmm. you deal you deal with a, a lot of people that have issues. Mm -hmm. But see the thing <laughs> more is, more but, see, but, see, but see the thing is to do this business full time, you have to have. Okay, then we about to just break it down like this. Your you have to have an expanded brand. You just sit here and told me. Let's see here. She does solo content, boy girl content. So that's two ways she she make money. Of course, I know the solos. You say you escort. Okay, that's three. Uh, okay, so that's content <laughs> escorting, and and like as she does pay gigs, so bookings, whatever you want to call it. That's the way that a woman can do this full time. You can't just do it off Rely of content. On one thing. Yeah. Yes, no, you, you know. For, and for I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. That is the goal is to be able to sit back at your house and just mm -hmm. sell your content and make money in your sleep. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. How, how big of a deal though do you be taking, baby? A deal? No, how big mean? of a deal though? Deal. A deal though. Do. <laughs> do you want me to show See, you? See, we're doing solos. Hey. Can I show you? I mean, you can show. You just can't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so let me think for a minute. No, these shorts aren't coming off. But I'll show you my deal. I, I, no, I'm thinking about the deal though. Wait a second. Did, well, not because you know, hey, people do reviews, so there you go. <laughs> oh, you know what? It's in my suitcase. Oh, god, wait, don't worry about it. We'll save that. No, my more. suitcase is right here because I took it to the oh, festival. I was gonna do a solo in my tent, but it was so hot, it was so hot in my tent, and I didn't want to put the light on in the mm -hmm. tent and people be able to see what I was doing at nighttime. Yes. Oh, my god, so, I know it's huge. So shoot, so, um, but what is your? Do you do? Okay, do you do? You are just terrible. Do you, <laughs> do, you do candy? Range of guts, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, that. Well, we read my guts. No, I don't. I don't believe in pegging. <laughs> I peg. I don't get pegged. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, um. Yeah, she threw me the fuck off. <laughs> I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are. Now, um, what, what I was saying was, so what is your do, do you webcam? And then when you do those, like, do you webcam? That's one. No, I I don't webcam. Okay, then. so I don't know why. So I, I don't like Go webcam. Ahead. I mean, I could do it, but mm. shoot. I mean, maybe if I do it like once a week or I don't, I just don't, I don't know. It's weird to me. Mm -hmm. You can see people so, in your chat. You can see people are there, but they're not tipping. Like I'm used to working mm -hmm. in a strip club where people are looking at me and like, eventually uh, there's some money coming in, but on webcam, I just, it's not the key is just the finding technical what, side of it is, yeah. is a barrier for me. It's, finding what, what is fun for you to do and make money with it within the business. Right. You know, I like to be hands on and yeah. creative. Yeah. And webcams just too too much like tech for me. And I know I'm just overthinking it. I know I could do it if I wanted to, but I don't want to do it bad enough. <laughs> so, 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 when you, so so when you do your solo videos, right? What is your mm -hmm. go to toys? Oh, uh, this dildo. Mm -hmm. This is my newest one. I have another brown one. It's a lot smaller. And um, I have like a rose clit vibrator. I got a Hitachi recently. That's Ooh. fun. 
So we squirt? I'm not a squirter. Mm. I actually also got into this because like, yeah, sex is always weird for me. Like, I don't. It's hard for me to orgasm. Would you say? You should say I'm a creamer. I, say, I think you're a creamer. I think you're a creamer. I'm a creamer. Right. <laughs> creamer. I do. Yeah, I do get creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, That's funny. What would you say? <laughs> what you say about the orgasm? Yeah, I don't. Um, this is this is a lot to unpack, but I'm. I'm thinking that I'm asexual. Mm. I know. And it's not that it doesn't feel good or I don't like it. It's just not something that I don't look at people and think like, I want to fuck them. I don't, I don't have those impulses mm. and people are like, that's sad. And I'm like, no, it's not, it's not sad for me. It's just, I'm okay to engage in that activity when it's, mm. when it feels right. But I don't look at people and like, I don't get horny. Like I rarely masturbate and I basically only have sex when I shoot. I'm single. I'm not hooking up with people. I'm not itching for it. Yeah, because I ain't going for people to realize this life can be lonely. When you Absolutely. Chase it. And you're probably better off lonely than anything else you could be mixed yeah, up with somebody else. Well, shoot, it, I mean, you can find love in the business. You have people, you, you'd be surprised how many motherfuckers in this business is married. A lot. Of yeah, I think it's really cool. Right. And I know a lot of couples. I've worked with a lot of married people and couples that are super cool. Especially um, Laura Cross. Laura and her. Oh. Husband. Yeah. They're they're like the power couple in my mind. And um, Dave and Christy at Private Society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I really enjoyed working with that. Like, yeah, that's my that's my vision. See, see, see that what I'm saying. You didn't hire to come out you, private society. I, I just I know, mean you didn't hear some heavyweights as far as uh, on the pay gig side, you know. So you kind of your your name is in the industry. You feel what I'm saying? So it's just yeah. now what you're doing the content, how much has your name now branched out more with the content? Oh, it doesn't seem like all that mm-hmm. great that content mm-hmm. is being created with these companies. It's I'm mm-hmm. getting buried really fast mm-hmm. when it comes to these big names. Like, sure, it's getting my name out for a second, but it's just a little mm-hmm. blip of time, and then it's gone, and it means nothing. So you well, constantly she, well, have to be creating new mm-hmm. to really stay in the mainstream, and I haven't had much luck in the mainstream. I kind of consider myself... Mm-hmm a bottom feeder in this industry. That's how, honestly, it's felt. It's like once you sell your first scene, your first boy, girl, mm-hmm. your first anal, your first... Mm-hmm. I haven't had a gangbang yet. Oh, so so, so you... Well, so, so actually, you, so, kind so of you, with private society. It was like a, a members-only club, so I guess that was a gangbang. So I can't even say <laughs> that anymore. I never mind. So, so how, how many... Okay, then, how many dudes was it? Oh, my God. It was at least, like, 20 to 30. I don't know. Mm. Oh shit! I was one of the yeah. first girls tapping out. The other girls were like in it to win it, like building up. <laughs> See, you were tapping I hit my wall. Out. I had a fucking wall. I was like, man, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> she don't dry it up. Well, I mean, I mean, <laughs> like, you did take out oh, twenty dicks, huh? I mean, that's a lot of dicks. That's twenty. That, that, that's twenty. That's a lot of dicks. Oh man. god, that's a lot of dicks. Man. Just gonna let you know. I mean, you just kind of lose count and lose sight of what's happening after a while. <laughs> it's crazy. My goodness, man. It's crazy. So she and, and of course, you, you say you have done anal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, seems to be a great selling so point. You, Most companies want that. You say, seems like. Yeah, actually, yeah, because I tell fem- the fe- females that do the most. Has the most opportunity and makes the most money. Right. It's just it. do what's comfortable for you to do. Because well, I'm not saying it's always been comfortable, yeah. but I had to get comfortable with it. Like <laughs> so, anal was not comfortable to me. It's not like I just came in the game like, yeah, I love to get fucked in the ass. Mm-hmm. I was like mm-hmm. at home mm-hmm. with a dildo in my butt, just like I remember when I just had to like get it in there and I couldn't even move it. And I had to train my brain to be okay with it. Mm-hmm. 
Because everything about that sensation you associate with, I'm shitting. I'm going to take a shit. That's what it feels like. So you literally have to train your brain like it's okay. And you have to fast yeah. and eat healthy to have a good experience and juice properly. Yeah, because it's like so much that goes into it. It's the prep. See, people don't realize, and I said this on on, on Facebook one time, and motherfucker was like, what you mean mental or physical prep? What? It, yes, it is. We just don't go in her ass like that. It's a, a lot of things got to go right for that moment to happen. A lot. I mean, to be honest with you, it from anal to DP, a lot has to go right. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's reading the room. It's your dick got to be the hardest of hard. She has to be at the horniest, horniest, and you done primed that ass for about a good 10 minutes prior to you going into the ass. By that, before then, she probably was walking around for a whole week with a butt plug in her ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what so, someone did on a shoot? I'm not going to say their name. But they took a syringe of coconut oil yeah, and squirted it up my butt for the anal scene. And it was the best anal sex I've ever had in my life. No, coconut oil. It is was, but you know what it did? I had jean what? shorts on just like this. And he was like, yeah. hey, you want to go out and do this and do that? I was like, sure. And I got out of the car and my ass was, it was just an oil, just a big oil thing <laughs> in my shorts. It just all came out. So, yeah. <laughs> best anal oh sex God. ever, but like, you need to wear a diaper or some shit. <laughs> So, so of course, um, you into I take it BDSM. Um, I'm not necessarily like dying for it, mm -hmm. but if somebody's into it, I'll do it. And I think it's it's a fun thing to play with pleasure and pain. Mm -hmm. Oh it's yeah, it's a fun thing to flirt with. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is 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 a beautiful sensation. Mentally as well as physically. Yeah. When you can find somebody you, you trust to do that oh, yeah. method. Yeah. No, it, it's the sub always chooses the dom. The dom never chooses the sub. So Yeah. That's what Harry taught me with yeah. um Azure Sky films. He said he said in reality the submissive is, is really the dominant in a way. Like it's all relying because, on their consent. Yeah. See that that's the thing about that lifestyle that people don't understand is that the submissive, when they submit, they're giving up control and power. When you're bound, you have no control <laughs> of nothing. So that means you have to have pure trust in that person. It's, 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 it's a, and it's more mental than physical. I tell anybody, but Dom is fucking is, it's submissive all the time. He ain't a real dog. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you know, it's an interesting uh, dynamic. See, she she has to earn that. But see, the tease makes her want it more. And you know, I, I don't want to go deep with you people. I don't want to go deep with you people. I'm not ready. I'm not know. ready. Not I think ready. it's a dynamic that plays out in everyday life. In every interaction, mm -hmm. there's a dominant and submissive energy yeah. in every single moment. Yeah. I mean, that it's, always it's not just with sex. Like, it's so mm -hmm. deep. And I'm so interested in learning more about that. And mm -hmm. I got an opportunity to work with facial abuse. And I just can't believe I did that. Like, I will probably never watch that scene ever again. But there are some beautiful <laughs> images from that scene. Like, I have pictures from it. It was just such a fucking trip. I would never do it again. But I thought maybe there's something here. Like maybe there's something to this that like maybe I'll like no, because, I'll like get it. But that was to the extreme. No, I, like, I've I done from, like, never I've doing never like to doing facial abuse. No, I've never seen like with that hair. Before. Yeah. No, but see the thing about it is also it shows versatility. See, females that are versatile have a better chance of doing more in this business. Well, if I'm glad, they can do I the BDSM, why people wouldn't want to work with me because it's just so. 
It's so bad. It's so filthy and just pitiful. But see, I was, like, but see, sincerely crying. <laughs> but see, it's when you're talking about BDSM. There's a niche crowd, niche market, money. They would like to see that. Yeah. You know, period. It's like, even from my experiences in it, <laughs> and my shoes <laughs> that I've done with it, and I know the money that can be made from it, still making from it. So that's why I tell females, get into your fetish bag. I mean, there's more than feet. It's funny to think yeah. back when I was in actually middle school. I don't know how I discovered her, but I found Betty Page. If you know who that is. Do you know who that is? Betty Page. Betty Page. I might, you know, I might know the Page. She was um, yeah. a pinup star from the 30s or 40s. Oh, okay. And she was into BDSM and she had this black hair that came to about here and these black bangs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she was known for taking pictures at the beach and she would have this like animal print Mm -hmm. on at the beach and then she would do a lot of bondage stuff and then she would do little like teaser dances she mm -hmm. was just the cutest thing and i my parents bought me betty page t-shirts lunch mm -hmm. boxes posters just i was surrounded by her it's just funny to think that as a kid like some part of me was attracted to that bondage I mean, it's, and, and I mean, her it's, smile and just the whole theatrics of it all. I think it's more fun to play with like the idea of it, this classic model mm -hmm. of it, instead mm -hmm. of it being this like real thing where people are really getting hurt and crying and yeah. leaving marks and puking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. having. I had a broken eye vessel after I worked with Damn. facial abuse. Like, why does it? Why does it need to go to such an extreme? Well, see, well, see, it one that was the company that you was working with. See, the thing is, this is the thing I tell any female. No, it. This is trial and error in this business anyway, and to also be aware of your boundaries and your limits, and never go against those boundaries and limits. Not even for money, you know. Period. Because the dangerous you're part about me is that I don't like to admit it. I don't like to admit it. <laughs> but see, I don't like to admit see, that it's too much. I want to be see, able to we, take it, but and see, that's dangerous. You, that's a dangerous mindset. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see, it the really thing about is. it is, it's a mindset that is good when it comes to porn because that means that you're open to do certain type scenes you get what i'm saying right. and also a willingness for more talent than one word you could they're gonna be like okay um she's in the bdsm okay cool i that opens you to more bookings because okay you might be willing to do like uh shots out the dark you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know dark tech you know what i'm oh, saying let's play you know it's stuff of that nature even to you know um like i said it's I tell females, understand this, allow your brand to find you. Let it grow organic. Oh, that's good. You feel me? I like that. Because it because it, like with me with the podcast, I was not looking to talk, do interviews with anybody. I wasn't even looking to talk about my porn career. Now, three years later, I'm avian nominated. There you go. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So but see, with, with you, it's like, um, even from looking at your page, what have you, um, you do, I think it would be in your interest to travel a little bit. One, because you, I don't know what state you may necessarily in, um, but. I'm in North Carolina. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we write the check. Yeah, the fellas. We yeah, me me and I had to chat. Yeah, after the after show. Y'all ain't gonna get to see the chat. Sorry. But anyway, back to back to the show. <laughs> but um no, because um yeah, because Angel Minks, she's here. Actually, me and her and Mr. Minks and and Tatiana Stills in South Carolina. I forgot who else. Uh Maria Fox. 
is in South Carolina. It's a lot of it's a lot of people. Once again, I'm retired mm -hmm. and I run into people in South Carolina. <laughs> but the boom and hell. It's not too late. Anyway, it's never too late. Anyway, see, <laughs> see, 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 she's a sexy ass lady. And mind you, she, she ain't even completely made up. See, that way I get the Supreme Smoke Room so y'all can see what she looks like made up. You know what I'm saying? She's gorgeous. But anyway, but with everything that you're doing, right, how do you balance it? Because also with that, you do meet and greets. So yeah. um, how do you balance that? Plus, filming content and making time for yourself for the mental break. You know, life is really good. I um, I always dreamt of living at the beach, and mm -hmm. my dream came true. And I love where I live and the trajectory that I'm on. Mm -hmm. It it all feels so good. So I spend a lot of time at the coffee shop working. That's where yeah. I do most of my work. I find a corner, a little nook where I can not feel like somebody's going to see the crazy shit that's popping up on my screen. <laughs> and I get my coffee and then I'll have my gin and soda water and treat myself to a meal. Every now and then I go to the gym. I go to Zumba. I got my ladies that I do Zumba with. So I'm getting that dancing out. I was really sad to leave the strip club. I didn't have such a great experience at the clubs here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I could work at them, but I, it's just not worth my time too. So it's good to have that outlet, physical mm -hmm. activity, getting mm -hmm. right with my body. I'm on mm -hmm. a, you know, a journey with my body, trying to trying to be the best version I can be. I, I don't I, want my I, I, I see you doing a good job. I, I, I see you doing a good job. Thank you. I, 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 I want my thirties to be my peak, not my twenties, or maybe even not my because I, I tell. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I always felt that women 30, 35, and then forty are more in their prime than what people say they're in the twenties. It's not about babies; it's about your sexual energy, you knowing yourself, you yes. understanding yourself. I'm still trying yourself, to figure out you know myself. In my twenties, I thought I had it all figured out. People are so right. People tell you this, and then you get to your thirties, and you're like, "Wow, I don't know anything. Like, I don't know who I am or what I'm doing." Or, and I do, I do know what I'm going for, and I have to every day. I have to keep yeah. myself on track. Like, I'm trying to be consistent, yeah. posting content. I'm engaging with my audience yeah. and my fans. You know, these 42 followers that I have on OnlyFans because after working with the OnlyFans management company and it not going well, I had to rebuild it. And it's hold on, hold it's on. At a turtle's <laughs> pace. Yeah. Please explain to me about this OnlyFans management company. Because I didn't hear somebody talk about it. I heard good and bad. Okay, go ahead. I don't even know where to start. What it the hell they managing? As a 60. He was taking 60%. And that was fair enough. So I was supposed to send him so much content and he was supposed to be posting. It was never clear if like I was doing the posting in my mind. I saw it basically how I'm doing it now is trying to post consistently on all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and figuring out a schedule and a rhythm and what kind of content is going to be specific to those platforms. I thought he was going to do that and really help me manage that, but it didn't meet my, what I thought it was going to turn out to be. Me. Yeah. And it was a lot of him just like sending me messages, which I almost feel like were AI. And he rarely wanted to talk to me on the phone. And, it, and he kept talking about, like, it was a team. It was, like, all these people, but it was only, I, I'm pretty sure it was only him. And then and then he eventually said it's going to have to go up to 65% because, like, you're not meeting this the, the status quo, basically. And that's when I was like, I can't do this. I mean, I was sending him as much content as I could. And mind you, I was still getting my lighting, and I still am trying to mm -hmm. figure out the best lighting. And I've rearranged mm -hmm. my room so it looks... A little bit nicer than it did before and it just wasn't up to par with and he kept saying like I, i'm managing other girls that are in the top one percent like basically i don't have time for this and i was like fine then like let's let's call it quits if i maybe the reality is i just can't keep up and he's a legitimate only fans management company or well, 
Well, see, or not, maybe it, it was a scam. It, like, so now I'm just like, I have to figure out how to do this shit. Like, mm -hmm. I have to figure out how to do it on my own. And I can't give my passwords away and give my power away to just anybody see, anymore. I see, the thing, about it, the thing about it is, with me, I never understood that OnlyFans management because I'm like, you, you, you can do it your damn self. Right. <laughs> I mean, it become down to it. it. It's, you know, period. It's like, or it was when I was working at my day job and I didn't have time. Now my day is consumed mm -hmm. with creating content, mm -hmm. posting, studying the algorithms, that the analytics. You see, you see that's why I hate about OnlyFans because it makes y'all have to post so much. I came from a time where we only posted like once a month. And we were good. And to me, wow. it took away, you know, it took away. The anticipation. Because when we dropped that scene, it hit. Because we let them the other scenes, like I used to drop three a month, right? I let them three marinate for a whole month. Then I hit them with something new. Within the time they marinate with them three, they're seeing previews of what's coming next for the next month. Yeah. You know, period. No, it's almost like you but, need to feed people breakfast, lunch, and dinner on all yeah. the platforms now. That's what it's like. See. The more consistent you are with that, the better off mm. you'll be. Yeah, yeah, because because there's I so have much no content like day. you have to stay in people's feeds and streams. Yeah. You have your little story and your reel and your post and showing yeah, up on some like girls showing like their nipples on YouTube. <laughs> you know, it's like sheer see through. I did that on TikTok with my music on my music account, and a couple mm. of the videos were gaining traction. And then they got banned. I was like, "Damn it!" I had this lace thing on where you could see my nipples through it. Oh my goodness! Got banned. Yeah, so it's it's just funny seeing what creators are doing to kind of push the limit and test the waters. Well, because controversy. I'm like, men can show their nipples on camera. Like women should be able to show their nipples. But see, but see, it because controversy creates cash and. And as much as it's, 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 I call it a, like a car wreck effect, it's like as much as they sit here and say they hate ratchet, they love it. That's why, I mean, you want to be honest, porn runs the world because look how the females dress, the dances we do, the, the girls do, and all that shit. It's porn shit. <laughs> Everybody want to be a porn star. That's why OnlyFans blew up. I want to make so, it really classic again. That's all I've ever wanted to do. And the videographer I worked with, who was a good mm -hmm. friend of mine who screwed me in the long run. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that done screwed me. But I, I would have these artistic ideas that I wanted to do, mostly involved with nature and just like a classic look, like a girl getting fucked in a horse stable or something. But see, but see you're coming <laughs> up with... That but see. encompasses Appalachia, mm -hmm. like the land. And and he would talk me out of it, and he's like, "People don't want to see that." But then I no, nah, you talk like, about some shit that I wanted to do. That was shit I wanted to do. Like, um, I wanted well, it to shoot old it was, timey, like just when them old houses, when, yeah. when them old wood houses is off there in the cut. Yes. So <laughs> I was seeing on my bit. mini vids. It's called Dream of Change, and it was my first interracial yeah. shoot that I got to own that was my idea and it was that it was in the 1930s and I had a flopper dress on and I come in with my glass of wine and I lay on the couch and I pass out and then the male talent comes in looking all ghostly ah. and he scoops me up and I'm asleep and then we do the scene and then at the end it's like I'm waking up and it never happened like it was a dream and that night me and him were like kind of seeing each other a little bit so we slept in the yeah. same bed and this was like an old plantation house it was built in the 1700s mm. it was like there were some vibes in there like we were shooting all kinds of shit in this house and oh my gosh yeah the vibes in there it was wild and sure enough those lights were flickering at night in the oh, bedroom shit. when me and him slept in the same bed it sure was I mean, it was so I mean, if it's, but i love that i love to shoot no Oh, creepy place. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's but, but to me, it's, it's, 
you you some you somewhat seeing where you want your brand to go. You feel me? Because it's kind of like you want to play Appalachian arts. You you want to play off that right. country team. You know. Period. Well, I gotta and, get back home. Mine's here at the beach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, out hey. here. some guy convinced me to come out here. A guy I was dating. A guy I actually mm. deleted everything for. Some of my mm. fans know that I, I just dropped off the face of the earth, and it was because of this relationship that brought me here, and it all worked out. Like, it's I'm blessed to be where I am, and mm. I struggle with that. Like, why did I have to go through such a bad experience to, to end up good? But um. Yeah, I just got to get home after a while. I'm going to finish school because I have, I'm a resident, so I got to write out my tuition that I have, and then I'm going to go back home to the hills. Hopefully find me a little piece of land and a little haunted <laughs> house to live in, choose some content. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. See, she sounds she sound like Rocky Sanders. She sounds sound like Rocky Sanders to me. I'm just saying. So. We know I'm a good old country boy and I like good old country gals. So mm. there you go. <laughs> so I think we did came to the end of a wonderful episode. And um me and Hunk will continue to chit chat after this once I finish press the end of the record button. You know, so you don't go nowhere, Miss Lady. So of course, you know, I got to ask her the million dollar question, don't I, fellas and ladies? Can I call you a smoke buddy? Yes, anytime. Say no more. Say no more. She'll be back here on the Smokers Lounge, <clears throat> and hopefully, I will get her to come to the premium smoke room on all your fans. You know what mm -hmm. it is. It's more wild. It gets more candid. Gets more provocative. Gets more unpredictable. We cut up more. Tits pop out. Dildos <laughs> might pop out. You don't know unless they already did for this one. I'm saying so. Imagine what <laughs> might go down when we bring her to the premium smoke podcast. And once again, five premium podcasts we do enjoy, three gorgeous hostesses that you're gonna fall in love with. And also in the video store, you get to see what I did in my career. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things, plus some other perks that we got for you in the premium smoke room and also for my subscribers on Spotify, or anybody on Spotify that would love to subscribe, check out Savage Smoke. I talk to the top male talents in the business, and we give it up. Oh, yes, we do. We talk about the business, the ladies, the producers, what have you, other male talents, and we don't hold back shit. Yeah, because it's behind a paywall, so you will have to subscribe on Spotify. So there's two ways to subscribe. Subscribe to both. There you go. Oh, and also, I have archived episodes of the Premium Smoke Podcast that you will not see on Loyal Fans, as well as limited podcast series that I also have done as well. So there's a lot of content over there on Spotify as well. You know what I'm saying? So Premium Smoke Room or Be Savage with the Smoke. You feel me? Now, with that being said, Miss Flowers, can you please tell everybody where they can spend money on you, gorgeous? Sure. Um, my my paid page is OnlyFans Paisley Flower mm -hmm. because the old one that got hacked was Paisley Flowers, so mm -hmm. the new one is just Paisley Flower. Mm -hmm. And my free page is Appalachian Arse. A R S E. You'll have to figure out yes, how to spell yeah. Appalachian. Nobody knows how to spell. <laughs> I then, barely do that. Hey, What's that? I said, I barely do it. I live here. <laughs> I live in North that's Carolina. What, that's what auto correct is for. Mm. But oh, by the way, I I forgot to mention at that festival, it was I had a great time, but guess what I did? What'd you do? I ran into an RV. I ran into the corner. You know the RVs that extend yeah. out? Yeah. It was in the morning. I was going to the bathroom. I was half asleep. And I took this corner and ran into it. And that's why I'm wearing this bandana. I don't want it to be like a symbol of anything. Like I never wear oh. bandanas like this. But um, I mean, look what. Oh. Isn't that so sad? But if it was there, I would kiss you for I might have a scar. Yes. Well, uh, uh, put some in there. Let me see. Um, I have some scar cream. 
Yeah, he did have scar cream or um. I had a goose egg. It just, it's more of a bruise. It's just more of a bruise than anything. It was bleeding. Oh, God, yeah. You, you really <laughs> made anyway. your head. I, I thought I was clumsy. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, you were I banging up. my head. I was like, no, I wasn't. It was the morning. Yeah. They were like, you were still Hey, you know how many times I done banged my head on that damn, uh, that damn washing machine we got at my job? <laughs> <laughs> the sharp edge, too. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> You know what? I was okay. so pissed. I was like, Lord, what is the message here? Mm-hmm. And you know what? You know what he said? Where Watch where you're going. <laughs> what the and Lord with said. That, <laughs> and with that, and with that we, we got to go because we're going to finish this conversation mm-hmm. right after I finish mm-hmm. saying goodbye to these smokers. So you know how we end these things all day and every day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience if you haven't learned anything? Smoke this over. Say goodbye to them, basically. Love y'all. Take care. Take care of yourselves and be kind to others. Thanks for watching. Yeah.